All right, a quick word before we get into the video. Um, when we're creating the model, I tell you guys to delete the magazine, and we're going to cover that later. However, in this video, um, I found out that Project Zomboid is, does not have the feature to allow the magazine to act as an attachment. So in the video, I made some annota annotations. Um, when you're creating your model, make sure you have the magazine on the model. So that's the quick little note before we start this video. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, hello and welcome. And today we're going to update the old tutorial I had about how to make a firearm in Project Zomboid. So we're going to use Blender. We're going to create it and uh, we're going to import it into Project Zomboid. But also we're going to create a weapon mod and figure out how to attach it and make it show in Project Zomboid. Um, so I'm going to cover a bunch of stuff. Uh, this is going to be a long video, so if you want to skip ahead, look at the chapters and you can check that out. Uh, a quick note, if you press J and the L key on your keyboard, you can actually fast forward or rewind, I believe, 10 seconds. And same thing for the arrow key. So left and right key will actually give you, a, I believe, a five second rewind or fast forward in case you need to kind of skim through things. Um, all right, so uh, refer to my older video on getting started with Blender. It's going to show you how to import um, or actually install that plugin that allows you to import DirectX files and you're going to need that. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to use Blender 2.79 and the best way to get started with creating a firearm is we're going to press N key and we're going to create a background image. But first let me open up Photoshop because I've already got some images ready. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and use that image. Something I took on my dirty floor, yeah. <laughs> um, well, hold on. There we go. So the first image, we're gonna it's not gonna show up, but you're gonna press five and three on your number pad to actually show it up. Now, this is with the whole background. Um, for me, at least, it's kind of confusing. It sucks, I don't like it. So what I do is I open up Photoshop and I basically remove the background. And a quick tip on doing that, we're gonna duplicate the layer here. This actually appeared on my second monitor, so just click that. Then we're gonna use the quick selection tool to basically highlight all that stuff. Now. Keep in mind that this part here has been cut off, so we're just gonna use that. Now what we, and then same thing for the stock here, but uh, if we press delete, nothing happens, but you gotta turn off your background layer. And as you can see, we have a background there. Now I'm not gonna go too far in depth with this. Um, it's gonna, just gonna kinda waste time, but <clears throat> I already kinda created this and we'll go in there. Um, this can, if you wanna go all out and kinda block out that stuff, that's only gonna help you. Um, but in this video, try and make it short as we can. I am going to skip that. Okay, so assuming you wanted to remove the background, I already kind of did that. And as you see, I rushed. <laughs> so it looks like shit, but that's cool. Um, now it actually only shows part of the rifle that we want to mod, and we can focus on a little more. So <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is, since we have a picture back here, Real, real quick again, once you add the picture, you're probably going to see something like this. You're going to press 5 and 3 and maybe 5 again on your numpad to bring it back up. So we're going to add a mesh and it's going to be a cube. So we've added it. Let's just zoom in and use the shift and middle mouse button to kind of move around. And we're going to kind of line this up a bit. We're going to press S to scale it down and R to rotate just a little bit. We can start at this uh, stock here. We can start at the pistol grip. You can start anywhere, but uh, just real quick, we're gonna start here. Um, so to uh, mess with a square here, we're gonna go to edit mode, and we're gonna use the middle mouse button to kind of move over just to see what faces we wanna select. I'm gonna use the side face. We're gonna select that. I'm gonna press five and three and five again on my numpad keyboard, and then I'm just gonna drag this up. Now we can press E to extrude and move that up, and we can keep doing that over and over again, and that definitely helps. But uh, that also creates more edges and more tries. So the goal is to try and keep our try count 
to about a thousand less than that um, if you don't it's just going to be a lot of detail and it's kind of unnecessary for Project Zomboid <clears throat> okay so you I'm, I'm sure you've seen this in other tutorials before we can take a good hour to repeat the whole process all over the rifle but uh, we're not going to do it in this video today I'm just going to show you how to quickly get started in case you don't know but that's basically it so what we're going to do today is we're going to import an already made model from the internet so I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to press X to delete vertices actually no let's just start new <clears throat> alright so we're going to clear out our scene now we're going to go to file import and uh, as you see DirectX is here if you do not have that you need to install the plugin and of course as before refer to the older video with that's I believe it's called getting started with blender I'll, I'll, I'll post it in the uh, description but uh, I know this model is an FBX so we're just gonna do that <coughs> and what we're gonna do is an FBX of an AK-12 now this model is directly from the author online um, if you're gonna do something like this just double check the license to make sure the author is cool with you using it for free or um, commercial purposes I mean we're not using it for commercial purposes and the license allows me to use this so we're gonna use it um, now thing to keep note here is our try count is 7440 that is pretty damn big so when we get done this model it's gonna be about a megabyte in size and typically guns and Project Zomboid they're about 200 bytes in size so just bear in mind uh, the size of the firearm it can lag the game so we're only using this as a good example of how to start <clears throat> okay so what we got here is if we move this it looks like the author actually made it in parts so that's cool that, that's just fine and we can work with that uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the magazine we're gonna need that later but everything else here we're gonna press A to highlight all and we're gonna press control J to join everything now what that means is we can click on an object and it all moves together it's exactly what we want okay so these other colors they also made uh, certain materials we don't need it so I'm going to remove those materials which will go here minus on the plastic and metal there we go we're gonna check this out here alright that's good that's fine <clears throat> okay so we went ahead and removed the materials now we just got the basic gun so pretty much if you would have made your own model you would have got to this point here um, something to make note of I forgot to mention is because we're making models that show up or mods that show up on the weapon in Project Zomboid we want a picture background of the rifle without its magazine and any other attachments so the basic rifle itself um, of course you could still use an image that still has a magazine in there and just don't fill it in that that works too um, but uh, this is what we want to have so <clears throat> we're gonna work on the texture a little later we're not gonna do that just now but what we are going to do is we're gonna import a DirectX file from Project Zomboid itself and we're gonna figure out how or what size we want need to make this so opening up the project Zomboid directory copying the URL so I can import this guy okay so we're gonna go to media models X weapon firearms and assault rifle we're gonna import that and you can see there's a huge uh, size difference here this is the assault rifle from the game itself it's the vanilla version the goal is we're gonna resize this and kind of match it up with what we got there so we're gonna use rotate and uh, if you go over here we can manually adjust these things what I'm gonna do is hit zeros on there just to make it perfect um, I think this one is yeah there we go 180 and then this let's make it 90 oh, negative 90 let's try that there we go so instead of just manually rotating if we actually use the menu here if you don't have it then again press N to make it appear and then you'll see the uh, transform setups here and we wanna remember that it's 180 degrees 90 and 0 
and then negative 90, negative 180, whatever. You want to keep it that way because if we rotate it and it's off just a little bit, it's just kind of mess you up. So that's why we do this right here. <coughs> Whoops, let's do a negative 90 and then a zero. Oops, there. All right, so we're going to use this tool here. We're going to kind of slim it down, mess around a little bit, and kind of get it right. Now we want this as close as possible. It doesn't have to be literally perfect. Um, I tried this before and I made it just a little bit smaller and it kind of didn't seat in the shoulder or the stock here didn't press against the character's shoulder and then the hand grip was actually up here. So just keep that in mind when doing this stuff. So we're gonna move that in. Now we don't need this rifle so we're gonna select it and press X to delete it. So that's good. <coughs> Now we've got pretty much a rifle that's in good position. I, I think we can work with that. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to move this over to Cycles Render because we're going to need that later. Might as well change that now just uh, so we don't forget. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, go to Object, Apply, Rotation and Scale, Object, Apply, Location. There we go. So at this point, we are going to save the Blender file as AK12 Blend. So that's saved. Now we are going to export the X file as AK12X and then export it. So good, let's minimize this and uh, we'll go into AK12 here. And uh, as you can see, this is our blend and that's that. So I'm gonna delete these. These are old stuff we don't need right now. <coughs> So uh, now that we have the AK-12, we're going to throw it in the game real quick. I know we haven't made a texture. Um, actually, we're going to need to make the texture, so yeah, screw it. Let's not throw it in the game. Let's just make that texture real quick. We're not going to make it perfect right now, but we'll, we'll do that a little later. So what we're going to do is we're going to press N to hide that screen. We don't need it right now. We're going to drag this side here and drag it. Whoops. We're going to drag it there. The bottom left here, we're going to go to Node Editor. In the top, we are going to UV Image Editor. So we'll press N on this window to remove that. And make sure you're in Cycles Render. That's important. Now over here, we're going to click the little ball thing here. And we're going to press a plus, And then that adds that there. We're going to hit New. And then Material. You can name it whatever you want. But I'm going to leave it there. All right. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit Mode. And as you see, this is already unwrapped, but we're not going to use that. We're going to unwrap it ourselves. So I'm going to press A to highlight everything. I'm going to go to Mesh, UV Unwrap, Smart UV Project. I'm going to put the island margin to 1, which gives us a little bit of spacing, which helps because we're going to alternate between Blender and Photoshop to work on our texture. <clears throat> okay, so now that we got that, we want to select new image here. Untitled is fine, so we'll keep it there, and it should be black. That's exactly what we want. Now at the node editor, we're going to go to add, texture, image texture, and we're going to paste that there. Make sure you're on cycles render, otherwise you're not going to see this option there. So once we're there, I'm going to scroll up, connect the color to the color. I'm going to click this little button and click untitled, what we did up here. Okay, so now we are ready to paint. First things first, I'm going to deselect, we're going to go to texture paint mode and it should be black. From this point, I am just going to quickly draw white all over this thing. And you'll see why a little later, because uh, if we just clicked and saved that image and opened it up in Photoshop, it's all going to be black and we're not going to have anything to work with. So at least doing white, you'll see the difference shortly. So just make sure you turn this rifle around all over kind of like spray painting. You're going to need different angles to quickly touch up some things. <clears throat> now in this uh, texturing part, we're not going to do anything crazy. Um, then again, we're not going to do the full texture right now. And uh, I'll cover that stuff a little later. We're just going to get a quick texture for now. And then uh, also remember this, since this rifle is a pretty big in terms of Project Zomboid as far as the size, there, there are ways to limiting the size and such. I'm not going to really cover it in this tutorial, but uh, 
all this detail, I mean, it'll show up in game, but we can still not have such a detailed rifle in the game and it still looks good. <clears throat> Okay, I think that's pretty good. <clears throat> All right, so um, before we move on, I'm gonna create a notepad document and call it color palette. Um, this kind of gives us the hex color codes just to write down in case we forgot and then it's just a, a way to keep yourself ahead of the game, so. Now that we got that, we're going to mark a few spots that we want to be specific about. So the first part, we are going to go full green. We're going to copy that. We're going to paste that there just for later reference. And this is kind of like a marker thing. So we can identify it in Photoshop real quick where this is so we can kind of paint it. All right, so that's that one hand guard. That's another. Got the grip here, the bottom and the side. And then we've got the stock, which, yeah, looks like crap, but we are just kind of marking our territory so we can quickly work in Photoshop. All right, so the, the stock, the grip, and the, uh, the uh, hand guards are going to be a certain color. And then the rest, such as the receiver, the sights, the Picatinny rails, and possibly the barrel, they're going to be a different color as well. Um, not a completely different color, but more of like a different shade of black. Alright, so now that we've drew on that, we're going to click image. I'm going to save as image. <clears throat> I'm going to go to ak12.png. We're going to save it like that. So that saves the texture over here like this and as you can see everything is white and that's exactly what we want if we didn't paint it white it would be all black and we have no idea what's going on so let's open up Photoshop we're gonna open up our image we just made there we go um, <clears throat> now from here now these are stuff that I made from earlier so these color codes I'm gonna paste in here so let's see what this looks like whoops I'm gonna adjust that down okay that's a good size for our handguard um, so we're gonna use a magic wand selection tool and we're gonna select the whole Thing here and it'll make sense in a minute just uh, bear with me <clears throat> all right we're gonna go to minus selection because it, it's highlighting over here it, it's not a big deal we can ignore the black we can still cover over it and it, it won't make a difference so I'm just kind of OCD a bit All right, let's go to the paint tool. I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger. All right, sorry guys, my uh, recording cut out. I guess Shadow Play has a recording limit now. But anyway, um, what I was doing was I was using the magic wand tool to select all the green writings and such that I or all the green markings that I did. And uh, once they were all selected, I went ahead and selected the color that I wanted, which is 43, 43, 43, and we've basically painted over it. Just like that, and as you can see, those were gone. I'm gonna press Control Z to kind of leave them there. But uh, but yeah, I can draw all over this thing, and uh, it's not gonna mess up anything else because we only have those selected. So once that is there, you just simply go to File, Save, and uh, we'll open up Blender again, and then you open it up here as AK12 and select Open Image. And once you open that image, you're gonna see your changes immediately right here, and. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we, we can uh, take a step further and actually manually paint some more here. That's fine. Um, but uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to work with textures 
closer to the end of the video, but uh, the point is we want to get this right into the game and start working on it. So uh, now that those are good, if you made any changes, make sure that image star is disappeared by simply going to save image. So that means it's saved. That's good. Um, <clears throat> So uh, before my recording cut out, I was talking for about 20 more minutes and then realized, oh shit, it stopped recording. So bear with me on uh, trying to remember where we left off. Um, I believe we exported this, but we're gonna cover it again real quick. So to what well, we exported this was to our model spot. So that's saved there, that's good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this rifle itself and that's simply, we go to object mode, select the object, we're gonna go file, export as an X file. We're gonna name it AK-12X in the same directory, which you can see is already right there. And it is 1.70 megabytes in size, which is huge. This should be roughly 200 to 700 bytes in size, but it's 1.7 megabytes. That's very big for this game and it can cause performance issues. So if you are using a model you found on the internet, make sure it has low polygons, low tries and all that stuff. Okay, so now that we've exported that stuff over to our AK-12 folder, we wanna get those into our firearm template. <clears throat> so a quick thing about the firearm template, you will see in the description below a Google Drive link to it. This template is something that I've created to uh, kind of streamline the process of getting right or, uh, weapons in game as quickly as possible with the new build 4151 settings or 54 settings. So if you click into this, let's just start at the beginning. You're going to have a preview. This is a template, obviously, the correct dimensions and all that. We've got mod.info. Now, in here, the name, it's going to be. Uh, apostrophe or whatever 11 that is simply because if you have a lot of mods I wanted this to show at the very top as a mod that I'm, uh, I'm working on so I can instantly click it turn it on and go instead of looking scrolling down and all that crap uh, the next part we've got the ID this template is using dev 6 as the ID um, once you get this I would definitely change it um, if you plan to upload to workshop it needs to be changed uh, I can guarantee you one of you guys are just gonna leave it there and I guarantee you maybe another one is going to leave it there and if it so happens to be that two people download this mod and then the other guy's mod with the same dev uh, with the same uh, ID there will be issues so please just change it now while you're here okay going in a little more we've got our media folder which is Lua models scripts sound and textures let's look at textures and here we've got a template for the item icon um, I've already named it AK-12, we'll, we'll cover that in a minute. We've got another folder called Weapons, and then two more called Firearm and Parts. These are where we're going to drop our firearm texture that we were editing, and as you can see, it's right there. Now going to Sound, we you will see no sound, but we have a custom sound in there. I'll show you that in a little bit. We've got a Scripts folder, which has two files. We'll, we'll cover that in a second. we got Models X, which two folders, actually it's weapons and then two folders the firearm and the parts we're not messing with parts just yet we'll do that later in the video but we have an ak12.x file that is our model we just saved and then we've got lua server items if we open that up it is dev6 distributions this is your procedural distribution file for the new settings and the new loop stuff so we'll cover this a little bit too all right so going back to the dev6-firearms.txt We'll open it up, and you can see a bunch of stuff here. So what you're going to have is, you're not going to have AK-12 or AK-12 rifle. It's, I believe it's going to say item name 1, and the reason for that is you could press Control F, and then item name 1, and then it's this is a control find. It's going to find everything with that name, and it's gonna most likely be one, two, three, four, five, like six different names. All you gotta do is type at the bottom here, AK-12, and it's gonna automatically find and replace everything for you. You can do it that way, or you could just do it manually by selecting AK-12, and then display name, icon, weapon sprite, you scroll down a bit, we're gonna have the, uh, the AK-12.x file, and then the AK-12.png file. <coughs> okay, so, 
To go over this stuff, at the very top, typically in the past I used the mod ID number as the module in here, but um, you know I'm no expert. All I know is as soon as I change the module to base and then I have imports base here, it just worked. Um, and I didn't really question it. I was happy it worked and we moved on. So you are going to leave that stuff right there. Now the item part and AK-12, this is the name of the rifle. So you want to have it as AK-12. Um, in our case, since we're making an AK-12, if you're making an M16, then just name it whatever you want. But uh, going back to this, um, moving down a bit, this is the build 41.54 stats. What this is, is basically the new updates, they added new things such as piercing bullets, um, stop power I believe is something new. We've also got um, a lot more sound options and we've got many different changes. So um, what I did here was I went into the actual Project Zomboid directory, looked up the assault rifle stats and then I pulled from there. And then I organized it in an easy to read, easy to edit format here. So the very top is weapon stats. This is going to be very common and very different from weapon to weapon. The weapon chance is basically your critical chance, your hit chance, and all that stuff. <coughs> the next part is sounds. Everything relating to sounds is right here. And most of our sounds, you are going to have like a template name here. It's not going to be M16 Jam or any of that stuff. Um, these sounds that I have highlighted here are actually from the game itself. So all I did was copy a, uh, I went into the assault rifle sounds and just copied it in there and pasted it in here just so it works. We can actually fine tune this stuff later and, and we will. Um, the swing sound here is actually a custom sound for the AK-12 shot. And since this is a template, I've been, uh, I believe this is actually pulled from the M4 shot. So I just renamed it AK-12 shot. But uh, we can cover and fine tune that stuff later. Now the next part is rare. I named it rare because I found that it's not very often I change any of these settings here. Um, now obviously if you're making shotguns, pistols, and rifles you will make changes here but not as often. For example, attachment type. If you are using a pistol this attachment type is going to be holster, not rifle. Um, but since this is a rifle, the attachment type is rifle. What that means is once you uh, you can attach it to your back or you can attach it to a holster or something like that. Um, and then everything else here is kind of self-explanatory. Um, something to note is the, jump gun, the jam gun chance. That has actually changed for the better. Um, in the past, I could have had the smallest damn setting such as this for gun jam chance. And that fucker will jam every time. So what they did was they made some changes and it's more realistic. So this is kind of tied to your condition of your weapon. So if your weapon is perfect, you're not going to have a jam. Once the condition meter starts going lower, then there's a higher chance of having a jam. And even then, if your condition is shit, you're not going to jam every shot. It's, it's going to be relatively realistic. Maybe you'll have one jam per magazine. I mean, it's something to kind of play around with, but, but that's a good thing they changed it. <clears throat> Alright, going down to the last part, we have weapon modding. This is where you're going to add your mod and specify where it's going to go on the rifle. Um, the mod name we didn't get to yet, but we will in a minute, or later in the video. Um, we're going to leave it mod name just for right now, but uh, we're going to have an EOTech in this game and we're going to mod it and we're going to change this later. And then the last two, I don't know why it's two spots. I mean, I just follow what Zomboid did and it just works. So just do this and you'll be fine. What that means is it's going to go in the red dot slot. And this red dot slot here is represented by an offset and rotate coordinates. We are not going to mess with these coordinates at all. We're going to change these coordinates in game using a tool which will do it for you and it's so much better. So going down to the model part right here is probably going to be item name one for you but we want to make that name the exact same as what we have up here and as you can see it is so we got model AK-12 and then we've got the mesh and texture locations this is critical to understand and make sure it is correct this represents the folder and it's all lowercase weapons so you want to double check and make sure we have it correct. So we're going to go to Models, X, Weapons, all lowercase. All right, that's good. Let's go in again. 
it's firearm all lowercase so let's check firearm all lowercase that's perfect we go in and AK-12 is right there that's good it is very important to know that file names for items and folders are very case sensitive make sure they're exactly the same otherwise there will be an issue most likely your weapon will not appear so now that we've confirmed all file names are correct we can move on and as you see we are at the bottom I'll explain this stuff later but for now don't worry it looks kinda of confusing but it's very simple just leave it blank and we'll deal with it later alright so I'm gonna press control save to save the file from all the changes that you should have made which is most likely the item name and then the sounds and then of course that we're gonna leave the model part as mod name just for right now so let's go to mods this part is basically the same thing leave that right there as it is we are going to mod this in a little later for now we're gonna keep it as mod name it's not gonna break everything but we'll keep it there so now that we have this whole thing set up properly let's go in the game find the weapon and make sure that model and its texture is loading properly so let's go ahead and do that now alright so uh, before we actually start Project Zomboid what we want to do is uh, we want to turn on debug mode for Project Zomboid so we check out this spot here we're gonna go right click Project Zomboid go to properties and launch options we're gonna have dash debug exactly as you see on my screen this is important because it turns on debug mode and there is an important tool we're gonna use to actually get the attachments properly done um, so in the description I'm going to have uh, a link to a form post on the debug mode um, go ahead and click into it now and look at it it's gonna lead you here scroll down a bit now this is what kind of screwed me up before and ultimately led me to to not want to use it at all um, but then we have to use it chances are you're gonna come across this screen and yes once you start the game you want to click break on error or break on error and press F11 and then it will go into a typical experience that you should expect just look at it read it learn it and do it <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get inside Project Zomboid. All right, now we're in Project Zomboid, and uh, if you did the debug mode properly, which very stu stupid simple, you'll see something like this. Just kind of ignore that for now. We're gonna go to Mods, and the very top, Firearm Template. We're gonna enable that. Another nifty mod to have is Disable Welcome Message, so you don't have that crap show up every time. Another one is isolated gun shop spawn especially if you're messing with firearms that spawn in gun shop this is something that's going to save you a lot of time if you enable it what this does is allows you to spawn directly into a gun store and then uh, the last part is necroforge i use this thing to help debug it. and that's all i have so we're going to go to solo custom isolated gun shop spawn that's good we're going to go to next now what i have is a preset preset of settings for mob testing and uh, in this I turn the abundant loot rarity all the way up for everything that way I the gun is there it will spawn and it won't waste my time so that's what I have um, I also have other settings such as mod test normal spawn after a while uh, when I want to fine-tune the spawns of this weapon on normal settings I use this for right now I want that sucker to appear every time it saves me time so I'm gonna choose that we're gonna go next. Everything here don't matter. Doesn't matter here. We're gonna go right into it. <clears throat> All right, so we're here. We're gonna have uh, some stuff. Um, if this is your first time with debug mode, you're gonna have a big ass screen. Just follow what was in that forum post. Um, hit that checkbox that says break on air and press F11, and you should see this. So now that we're here, I'm gonna go to the rifle. All right, AK 12 rifle. Let's grab that. So, uh, so moment of truth all right <laughs> so the weapon spawns that's good the texture is screwed up that's fine we know it's gonna mess up and then we also see another problem the weapon is upside down so that's something we can fix in blender so let's go ahead and do that really quick and then we'll move on to the next step all right so I exited 
Project Zomboid, I took a picture on my phone just to kind of reference of where that rifle is. So the rifle is just fine where it's at, but it's upside down. So once we open this blender thing up, uh, back up again, we're going to press N to make that window appear. We're going to make sure we're going to select the rifle, and we're going to press R and X. Well, that's not the right way. Let's do R and Z. Okay, that works. Now we're going to move it here, and as you can see, it's 182, so it's not perfect. We're going to make it 180. And there we go, that's exactly what we want. So we just did a simple 180 on the rifle and it should be in the hands now. So this is important. Select Object, Apply, Rotation and Scale, Object, Apply, Location. And then we're going to export this again as a DirectX. We're going to export it to our directory that we've been working in before. And then we're going to minimize that and then there it is right there. We're going to remove this folder from the mod spot and we're going to go back to our ongoing projects folder we're going to open this up we're going to delete that and we're going to drag that right in there well, actually we're going to press control C to copy and then control V to paste because if we drag and drop it's going to drag the folder without copying it so so now that that's there that's good we're going to copy firearm template and go back to the mod directory and we're going to press control V to paste it and now we can go back into the game and double check to make sure it is actually working. Okay, so we're gonna go to mods real quick and it's still enabled, that's good, we'll leave it there. We're gonna go to solo, custom, we're not gonna load the old one back up. We're just gonna create a new one. We're gonna go to mod settings, there's mod test again, and we'll skip those. All right, now we're gonna go in and we're gonna encrypt in both hands. And there we go. And as you can see, the texture is kind of fixed now. Let's turn on this light real quick. Remember before it was like black and weird? Well, because we made some changes in flipping the, tech, the, uh, the model around, remember we still had that texture map that we made. Um, it, it's gonna have issues like you just saw so that's why we're gonna work on textures later once this rifle is good to go and as you can see we're looking at the placement right now so we've got the hand on the pistol grip which is good we've got the stock in the shoulder which is perfect and we've got the hand on the hand guards in the front and that's good yeah it's off just to buy a little bit but that's fine we can get away with that uh, especially if we have a model of like an attachment for the AFG Magpul grip that would actually fit nicely. Okay, so now this is actually in there, let's check the placement model of what this looks like if we place it on the ground. All right, perfect. As you can see, if we place this on the ground, we rotate it, it's just gonna kind of stick like that. And that, no, we're not balancing it on the, uh, the, um, the barrel. That's just not good. So how do we fix this? Okay, well, let's look into the debug mode and the attachment editor so this little icon something you've never seen before or you may have just click it and go to attachment editor from here we're going to go up and we're going to type ak12 and there's our ak12 so we spawned it in and we can see it okay and uh to the left you can see what is kind of familiar with what we saw in our firearm template but they're all zeros that's fine so what we're going to do is we're going to look for world we're going to click that and then we're going to kind of mess around and see what we can do um, so since we know this is standing on the barrel let's rotate it so we're going to hit translate and this is not like blender where you can move around i mean you can highlight this to kind of see everything so let's choose something that relates to it okay so you see the barrel it goes down that actually looks right so we'll choose that and then we're going to highlight blue and we're going to move it around it, it takes a minute to get used to it but you'll get used to it so we just made a change and as you can see it's been saved here so you want to hit save and it actually writes it directly to the text for you which is what we want so now that we saved it let's exit and let's go ahead and try to place this and see what it looks like okay well we rotated it the wrong way so that's fine this is where we kind of play the trial and error part so let's rotate this way and see what happens we'll hit save exit 
place item. Okay, we're getting there. We're close. So now it looks like that. All we got to do is rotate it now. So let's go back in and let's do the green. We're going to rotate. We're going to hit save, exit, and then we'll place it again. And there you go. Okay, well, see, it's kind of like a trial and error part. So we can rotate it, but then again, it's like we're masters our balance we're balancing a whole rifle on a pistol grip <laughs> so let, let's kind of mess around and uh you know I'm, I'm still learning this whole thing too so i'm kind of a little off on the getting used to part of this so i'm sure after some time i will know exactly how to make it work there we go perfect so we made a change and then we'll place it on the table well that's actually on the ground let's uh fix that place item there we go there we go we placed it on the table and it looks good um, now as you can see how detailed this rifle was in blender you can kind of make out some of the details like the iron sights the charging handle the trigger the magazine release it's very small but it's still there so let's pick it up real quick and equip it um, so I'm aiming. You can kind of see the bolt if you pay attention to it. You can kind of see the Picatinny rails and all that stuff. Um, so this is a highly detailed gun, but I mean, if I'm running in game, unless I'm putting my face right up to the screen, I'm not going to notice that. So you're going to probably find some models out there that have a million polygons that just don't do that because that's for like AAA games or that's for games that love their weapons. So. All right, so now that we know our model is good, our texture is good, let's get our weapon mod in the game and attach it to the rifle. All right, so let's exit out of that, and then we'll go back to Blender. All right, now that we exit the game, um, there's an important thing we want to note. Since we made those changes using the debug editor, we're going to go into our mod folder of where this mod is, and in here, scroll down, you can see the world placement values have changed. This is important because we now can delete our ongoing projects firearm template and use this as we'll press control C and control V to paste. So now it's in this folder that represents ongoing projects. I mean, you can keep it, it just depends on your organization. For me, this is how I do it. So I can delete that. Now we still have one file and if you want to be paranoid and double check, it is there. So that's good. All right, so the world attachment is good to go. Now, I know we still have to work with the magazine, but let's work on the red dot first, and we'll get that in there. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll open up Blender. Um, we don't, well, we can keep it here. Let's go to save. We're going to save this as a Blender file so we can refer to it later. We'll move this over, we'll press N to hide that for right now. And now we're going to import an EOTech directly into this. Now the EOTech, we can create it ourselves or we can download it off the internet. Creating it yourself, which will be a little easier because it's smaller, um, just use the same method as I showed you in the beginning of this video and you can create your own optic. For those that do not want to create their own optic, let's add it from something we've uh, imported from the internet. So we'll go to File import. Now I know it's an FBX file, so I'm going to import it that way. Let's go ahead and uh, locate where we want it, or where we have it stored. So it's accessories, scope, and QX. We're going to import that, and there we go. As you can see, this file is huge. So the goal here is pretty much the same. We're going to resize it, and then we're going to make a quick texture of it, and then get it in the game. So we're going to press S to scale it down. We're going to press N to get this window back up. Now you see how this was like a dark orange selection. I want to right click it and select it. So now we're going to press R, Y to rotate it. Uh, I don't want to rotate it that way. Let's do R and Z. There we go. And then since we're not perfect with that, we're going to do negative 90 to make it a perfect 90 degree turn. And now we can do RY, well, not that, RX, there we go. 
and we'll do that there, which is a negative 90 degree turn. And since we're not perfect, we kind of messed that up there. All right, so now that we got it in a good spot, let's go ahead and maneuver it into where we want this thing. So as you can see, that looks good. So we're going to continue working with the scale. This kind of looks a little tad bit big. Let's make it a little smaller. Um, now it's kind of hard to do this if you've never messed with actual firearms in the, the real life EOTech. Um, so you may have it a little wrong, but uh, you know I've messed with this stuff a lot before, so I, I kind of have an idea of what it looks like. And I actually have one in my hands right now, so I can use that as a reference, or I can actually look online and see what it looks like. There's many things, because you don't want this fucker really small. That's just kind of ridiculous. All right, so that looks relatively good. Um, the size is good. Now, the placement in Blender does not matter. Forget about that stuff. We just want to size it up and make it look good. All right, so that looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is go to Object, Apply, Rotation and Scale, Object, Apply, Location. Now that button just moved down there, which means if we move this, it's kind of off. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo what my movement just did, and I'm going to hold Shift, Control, Alt, and C. That is your left shift, left control, left alt, and then C at the same time to bring this menu up. And we're going to do origin to geometry. There we go. So we got the dot where we want it. You can also do it right here. All right, so now that it's there, that's good. We want to export this as an X file. So let's do that. All right, don't name it AK-12. We're going to name it EOTech. 522. Um, 552, 522. Okay, I can't remember. Fuck it. We'll just call it a 552. Oh, I messed that up. All right, whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll fix that later. So uh, exporting, and that's good. And as you can see, it is right there. And I'll fix the name later. All right, so now we want to UV map this thing, and we want to kind of do what we did here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit X on that. We are going to minimize that, minimize that again. We'll hit the ball, we'll press the plus icon, we'll hit new, and then kind of the same as before. First we're going to hit N to remove that screen. At the very top it's still UV image, that's good. We are in cycles render, so that's good. We'll go to add texture, image texture, we'll connect the colors, now we got to unwrap this thing, so let's go to edit mode. And it's already unwrapped, but we're going to do it ourselves again. So UV unwrap, smart UV project. The island margin is still 0 0.0.1. Or, yeah, you saw. <laughs> we'll press OK, and there we go. A uh, little bit spaced out, but whatever, that's fine. So now we're going to hit new, untitled 1, because we did untitled before. Let's just do untitled 1. Press OK, it turns black. We'll press A to highlight all. We'll go here and go to Untitled 1. And now we are ready to paint. So, <clears throat> first, let's go to Object Mode real quick. Move that out of the way. We'll go back to Texture Paint Mode. And let's texture it. We're going to make it all base coat of white. And don't worry about anything in the paint in the background. We are actually only painting this optic since we have it selected. So you can go crazy, go to town, do what you need. Now the goal is get this thing saturated with white all over. So it makes our life easier later.
All right, so this looks decent. I mean, we could probably uh, touch up a few more spots, but let's just export this and get it in Photoshop and see what we're dealing with. All right, so I'm gonna drag this out a bit. We're gonna hit image, save as image. Remember to name it. We don't wanna overwrite our uh, AK-12. I'll call it a 552, whatever. I can't remember the name. Save, okay, we're good. Let's go to Photoshop. We'll get rid of that. And we're gonna open up our 552. There we go, that's good. So as you can see, everything is colored, except for a few parts here and there, but that's okay. Um, I forgot to actually mark in here what we want, so. We're gonna use green as a mark because I'm gonna have two tones on this thing. Oops. So basically this here is gonna be one color. This sheet is gonna be one color. The knobs are gonna be kind of like a little darker color, but uh, yeah, you get the point. We will fine tune this stuff later. All right, since I saved the file, I'm gonna have to reopen it again just to see the results update there we go all right we'll do a quick little uh, grab of everything we colored that looks good now here is the color palette for the AK-12 um, we can make another one just below it call it EOTech I, I call this thing a color palette just to help me uh, remember some stuff so we'll go in here and we'll make it a little more darker so 2F 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 that works I'll just call it that and see what happens. All right, so I still have these selected. We'll go to the paintbrush tool, highlight over it, and we're done. I'm going to press Control S to save. That looks good. We're going to open it back up real quick in this, and uh, you can see the change. All right, that's good. That's decent enough for our quick test run. So this is already saved. We've already exported the EOTech. So let's get them into the proper locations of our firearm template. So we go to Models X Weapons Parts and we'll place the EOTech in there. Now I want to name this the same. So EOTech 552. So everything involving the EOTech is going to be named that. So while I'm here, let's just fix that name. There we go. And then let's just double check, control V. Okay, the texture looks good. So let's move the texture over. Weapons, parts, EOTech, control C to copy, control V to paste. So that's in there, that's good. That's all we need to do. Uh, now we need to edit some of the stuff in the script. So we'll open with code. All right, let's go to mods. Here we go, so mod name. Let's go control F to find, and then, whoops, let's uh, highlight that name, control C to copy it, and then control V to paste it. That way there are no mess ups, and we paste it. So there we go. EOTech 552 for everything works perfectly. So we got mods in there, that looks good. Our directory file structures are named exactly right like, so that's good. We'll go to Firearms, scroll down a bit, and then we change the mod name here. And there's only two instances found, but let's ex let's just do a find and replace all again. All right, that's good. Control S to save, so that's good. So now we have the model weapon part, EOTech 552, the same name again, red dot, red dot. Now these two red dots here refer to the position on the rifle, which is here. <laughs> again, I don't know why it's there twice, I'm just gonna follow along, pretend I know what I'm doing because I know it works. All right, so now that's done. We are ready to, oh, no we're not. Let's go to our distribution. Almost forgot. I'm gonna save that, copy that name. We'll go to distributions. Here we go. And we're gonna replace the AK-12 part with the name and press Control S to save. Now we are ready to move this over to the mod directory and let's go ahead and start Project Zomboid and see if we can make this work. All right, 
still activated. Let's go ahead, solo, custom sandbox, isolated gun shop, and mod test. We're creating a new game again. Just get in the habit of doing that. Alright, let's hopefully find it. AK-12, okay, that's good. So we'll grab one. Now the EOTech, we didn't change the display name and we didn't change the name of the icon. I mean, we did, but we forgot to create another icon template. So that's why we have a question mark there. That's fine. So we got both there, but we still need a screwdriver to attach them. So that's where Necroforge comes into play. There we go. So now we got a screwdriver. So what we can do is we can right click and place item of the EOTech. Now we only have this place item option because of the world static item uh, option in this specific item. So as you can see, it actually spawns in. And then the textures of course are messed up. You can rotate it, so that's good. Let's not place it though. Let's mount it to our uh, um, our AK, which of course we don't have the option to upgrade. So I'm kind of happy this happened because we made a mistake somewhere. We should have an option that says upgrade, but we don't. So let's leave Project Zonvoid and double check what the problem is. Okay, now that we're out of Project Zonvoid, let's delete this file so we don't make the mistake of editing the wrong file. We're going to open this. Well, it's already open code, but let's open this back up in code. So the first issue is the icon. Let's fix that right now. We'll do, well, let's make it simple. Control C and Control V to paste. We'll name it there for now because I want to copy and paste the exact name. And there we go, we're going to fix that while we're there. So we're going to rename item underscore EOTech552. There we go. So doing that, we fix the icon problem. Now the world static model, this option here is, the reason why we were able to place the EOTech is because we have this right here. So let's go in distributions, or no, we'll go into the firearm part and find out why we can't place it. So, we have model weapon part, EOTech 552. Okay, we got, let's go to the mod. Okay, there we go. Mount on. We still have item name one there. So that's why it didn't work. So we're gonna copy, whoops, we're gonna copy AK-12. We're gonna paste it there, we'll save it. And we still have dev6 as the mod ID here. Just. I'm pretty sure we can name it base.ak12, but I'm just going to say dev6, and it's going to work. Um, so now that we have it there, let's go ahead and uh, close out. We will add this guy back into our mod directory, and let's launch Project Zomboid. Alright, so now that we have the icon up here, and the display name is XPS3. Well, that's the wrong name for this uh, this EOTech. We can fix that later. Let's grab one of that. While that's loading, let's do the screwdriver. There we go. So now, we can right click on that and we've got upgrade. So that's perfect. Let's upgrade it. Now let's equip it. And let's aim it. Okay, well, you kind of can't see it, but you can because the EOTech is actually embedded in the pistol grip of this rifle. You can kind of see the blackness a little bit over there. So to fix this, let's go to the attachment editor. We're going to add AK-12, and then we're going to add the EOTech. And that's good. It all shows. So that's great. So, if we select red dot, you can see that these options appear here. If we go anywhere else, we haven't messed with them, so, but, yeah. But basically, it, if you haven't 
noticed already, this is where the EOTech is, and then this is where our lines are pointing to. So if we move this up and here, theoretically, it should spawn there. But I think this is something wrong in Blender, or maybe a little mess up, but you'll see in a second. So since we made the change, let's press Save, and let's exit. Now we aim, you can see the EOTech has moved, and it's floating over the weapon. So we have to do some fine tuning and adjustment to get this where we want it. Okay, so let's do a 180 degree rotation on it. Let's just work on that first. So we want to select the EOTech. We want to right click the EOTech and select parent to red dot. And as you can see, it moved a bit. So now that it's there, let's go to our AK-12, make sure red dot is selected, and now we can move this. So we need to rotate it, but first let's let's just see what happens if we move this back. So we'll hit save, exit, and we're gonna aim. And since we backed it up, it's actually below the trigger guard. So this is kind of weird. So even though it's not lining up in this, we, we have to kind of play with it. Okay, well that's way too high. Let's do some fine tuning and adjustments. Save. And, okay, that's getting better. Let's go down a little bit. Save. Okay, so let's work on rotating this thing. So now we're going to go to translate and let's rotate the green. There we go. So now you see how straight this line is? I haven't let go of the left mouse button and I'm moving it. You see how the line is not straight? If you move it to make it straight, that is one way to tell this model is in line. So let's save it. I know it looks screwed up here, but let's see what it looks like there. Okay. Well, good. So we kind of lined it up. Now we just got to rotate it at a different angle to get it to work. Because obviously, this the optic's pointing up. So we'll go to Attachment Editor. Now I believe we rotated this. Well, yeah, we did. Which, shit. Alright, it's back. So let's rotate the green. Let's see what happens there. Um, okay, let's just save it and see what happens. Okay, I rotated the wrong way. So let's undo that change. And now let's rotate it at the blue. Remember, straight line makes it straight. Okay, we'll hit save. Now we'll aim. Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> Same thing with the rifle. We are figuring things out. Let's go green. No, we did that. Let's go down here. No, that's not going to work. Okay. I think we have to do this. Let's see what happens. All right, there we go. So now, if you remember before, we were just going up and down. We can just finally do that. So we'll hit rotate, which is now translate, and let's go down a little bit. Save it. Let's aim. That looks pretty good, but I want this thing to move up a little bit more because our eye relief on an EOTech is much better than a 2x, 4x, or 12x scope. So we can move that closer to the center. To do that, we're gonna do this. We'll see where it ends up after that. All right, so that's the wrong way. Let's point that forward a bit. Okay, that's acceptable. But just kind of looking at it, it almost looks like it's floating just a little bit. So let's do a last second adjustment. Uh, that might be the wrong way. Yeah, it was. Okay. Okay. That's too far down. <laughs> yeah, trial and error. So this part is the fun part. Yeah, I know. There we go. That looks pretty good. There's no obvious clipping. Maybe except for there, but the texture is also off. So let's work on getting that texture working before we do any more fine-tuning. But that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and 
remove the upgrade and we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and equip the weapon again. Okay. So we can place the icon. That's good. And as you can see, we need to adjust the world placement really quick on this before we go. We'll do that in a minute. So let's go ahead and add it back again. Fast forward. And it's right back where it should be. So that's good. All right, I'm actually glad we picked up on that world placement part. Um, so see, I mean, oh, wrong one. <laughs> so we can place that. I mean, it, realistically, you can place an EOTech that way. But if you own an EOTech, you most likely will place it another way. So how do we fix that? Well. Alright, I'm not really sure if attachments like that can be modified for the world thing, but since I haven't done this part, let's go into um, the main Project Zomboid directory and see for ourselves. Okay, so here we got the 2x scope, and I actually don't see attachment world in any of these. Um, I'm pretty sure the way we were doing it is how it's supposed to be done, but I believe um, the developers have not implemented the world attachment to models like this just yet, because hunting rifle, as you see, it's it's there, but for their optics and such. I actually believe when you place an optic down, it's just going to show its image, the icon image. So that's probably why it doesn't work. Uh, we'll just have to wait for another update to uh, work on the mod um, placement. So we'll skip over that part for now. And uh, we're going to exit out of that, and we're going to remove the world placement from the specific model, um, such as this, the attachment world part, because we don't want that to interfere with anything okay so what we've done right now is we've made a model of a firearm we put it into blender we've made a texture and put it into uh, the game we've also made an eotech and we put it in the game which by the way let's fix that so now in the very beginning we've had a magazine so let's put a magazine in the game and Okay, so after looking um, into the base code, they don't have this in Project Zomboid just yet, but I believe they're actually preparing for it in a future update. So here is a M16 assault rifle with no magazine inserted. And as you can see, the magazine is still there. So let's go ahead and insert the magazine. And it's still there. So if we wanted to have the magazine appear as if it was loaded and then if it's empty and you remove the mag the magazine no longer is there we're gonna need an outside script to do that and uh, that's gonna be outside the scope of this tutorial so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work on making the model with the magazine automatically inserted into the rifle and uh, it's exactly the same as building the rifle so let's look at that real quick all right so since we know the magazines are kind of not in the game just yet, so to speak, 
let's go ahead and undo the changes we did. There we go. Now, all right, let's open up an old Blender file that we saved earlier today. And as you see, this is what we worked on earlier in the video. So at this point, it's exactly the same of what we did here, except um, I will narrate the first minute or two of the video, and then I'll just speed through it. Um, I'll have it fast forward so you can kind of see if you're interested in seeing. But it's, it's really simple. So we're just going to start fresh again. And this will actually take a minute at most. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to import an FBX. I'm going to minimize that and then copy that path just so we don't have to go all over the place. I'm going to back up. Okay, so we got, we're kind of back at square one. Now, this is good. So we're going to press Control A to select everything and press Control J. Oh, hold on. Control J to join it all so we can select anything and move it around. So there we go. That's the only difference. Before we just deleted the mag and then joined everything. So from this point I am going to stop talking and fast forward the video and show you how basically what we just did in the beginning. now we're back um, yeah sorry about that mess up but uh, what I had to do was basically everything from scratch again um, and as you can see in the fast forwarding part it I even had to uh, readjust the optic as well because I messed with the scaling of the rifle and that kind of made the optics sink in all right so <clears throat> through fast forwarding all that stuff what basically happened was I wanted to have the magazine disappear when there was no magazine inserted. But then, when you insert a magazine, the magazine will appear. So it acts as an attachment. However, Project Zomboid has not released an update or made it so it would work. Um, in order for that to work, uh, there has to be an outside script that will make that function. So that's where Brita's Weapon Mods, or Brita's Weapons Pack, and the arsenal requirement that he has a script in there that does it. Um, in our case, we want to just go after what is set up in Project Zomboid itself. So what I did was I created a render of the AK-12 with a magazine already inserted and I also made the texture for it. So I had to basically start from scratch to get that in there. And, uh, and I did that because Project Zomboid that's how their rifles are. So if you find an M16 in the game and it has no magazine inserted, the 3D model is still going to show the M16 magazine inserted even though there's none in there. So yeah, I want to keep mine kind of as close to Project Zomboid as I can. Um, however, I'm pretty sure they're going down the path and the developers will eventually release an update that allows the, the magazine to disappear as it shows on uh, Brita's weapons. All right, so from this point, what we've done today was we've created a AK-12. I briefly covered how to co uh, to do it by scratch, but then I mainly worked on importing something from the internet. And uh, we got it in Blender, we made some changes, we made a texture, and we exported all that stuff into the game using the firearm template. I showed you how to basically uh, add options and add different things here and there. Um, I touched up really light on the uh, the textures. That was only because I wanted to focus on 
getting these models to appear in game and actually working. Um, in the past, it took me a long time to figure out how to do this and a lot more troubleshooting. So that was the biggest part. Uh, for you, it's much easier because I, I got a video telling you how to do this. So, um, so once we got those models in, it works. And then I realized, oh shit, we can't use the, the magazines as an attachment. So that's why we had to go through making everything again. So now, let's go ahead and uh, just work on the texture of the rifle a little bit more. Um, what this basically means is, no, oh, well this is a new version of Blender, I don't want that. We're using Blender 2.7.9. If you're using a different version of Blender, I cannot help you. I have no idea how to do it. So, yeah. All right, so um, with this stuff, uh, We are going to basically. Oh, I messed up. We're we're gonna kind of polish up the texture, make it look a little better, and uh, I showed you how to do one mod, which was an EOTech. Um, I know there's a lot more you can do, such as a foregrip or something, or a silencer. I'm not gonna show you in this video simply because you can just basically follow the steps of the the EOTech and instead of placing it in red dot if you want to have a suppressor you place that guy in muzzle and then you use the attachment editor like you've seen me do um, assign it to the muzzle and then same thing for the uh, um, the grip or the laser um, if you want to have a grip like a vertical grip then your attachment would be the laser however if you wanted a mod a grip and a laser and an optic then you can simply create a new attachment remember make sure you create it here first and then go to the attachment editor and select it there and then you can do it um, so yeah the last part of this video is texturing which I think I'm going to have that as like a fast forward moment where I'm just not going to talk and then you can just kind of see how I texture everything but I also said we were going to cover the distribution. So the last part of me talking here is going to be with the distribution. So we're working with firearms and using this set that's already here, it's kind of good for firearms. But if you want to go a little more in depth, then uh, there is a form post on uh, Project Zomboid that kind of shows some things of how to do the spawns. But uh, let me cover it here as well. So what we're going to do is we are going to open up the Project Zomboid directory and we're going to reference that a few times. <clears throat> and uh, if you're ever stuck, you definitely should do this as well. So let's move this off screen for now. And we're working in the Project Zomboid directory. Let's go to where their distribution is located. Server items. Okay, so in here, there's two files you want to look at. Procedural distributions.lua this is basically where the items are and then you've got uh, distributions.lua which is where the rooms are um, there's a lot of magic that works in these things I'm not going to cover that part but basically let's say instead of the gun store you want to put your weapons in the police store so that's cool that's fine what we're going to do is we're going to copy this bottom we're going to use it as a template and then Let's say you want the AK-12 to spawn in the police store. Let's find the police station in here. So we're going to do Control F to find police. And we've got something here. So it looks like police lockers is something we can use. But uh, that's mainly for like uniforms. So let's see if we can find something else. The desk, uh, no. Here we go, police storage and then police storage guns. This is what we're looking for and all you got to do is copy that and then paste it here and then you're done basically police storage guns is any locker in the police storage that's uh, and also metal shelves you're gonna have the your gun spawn in there um, so let's go back to the the other the procedural distribution first we're gonna copy this I'm going to go there, we're going to press Control F to find it, and here you go. So 
If you ever got a question about what police storage gun is, you need to go to procedural distributions.lua, control find, and here it is. From here, you can see what's already in there. And uh, with our little code here, we simply insert this directly into this without overwriting or conflicting with anything. That's all you have to do. Make sure it's two lines, the top one and the bottom one. The bottom one, you're gonna handle, it's gonna handle the, uh, the spawn chance. And the top one will be your mod. Um, let's do another example. So, let's say you wanna have the EOTech spawn um, in the garage, like a, a, a garage of a home or something from somebody who may have them or just have a really rare chance of that spawning in a garage. So let's go find that at their distributions and let's type in garage. We're going to do control F to find and then type in garage. So we got shed. Okay, well that that looks like it could work. Um, so here's a locker we can stash the EOTech in garage tools but uh, you know that may not work so you know what maybe not garage let's do hunt see if oh, something came up there we go hunting so we got hunting um, this looks like there's a clothing rack I'm not gonna find a gun in there there's a counter so store there's a counter that contains cleaning products a counter that contains bags we got books. Okay, well, camping store gear. Maybe we can kind of throw that here. So there's a slight chance the EOTech will spawn at camping store gear. Now, let's see what camping store gear has. Okay, that's where your tent stuff is. Oh, display case. Here's one. Gun store display case. So that's pretty good. We could do that too. And in that case, you can spawn that guy right there and it's that simple um, I think that's about it for this stuff here can't think of anything else that was a quick and dirty uh, description of the spawn stuff okay so the rest of this video I am going to basically kind of have a look at a little fast forward moment where I go back and forth between Photoshop and Blender and I'm gonna work on making this model look a little better. Uh, same thing goes for the EOTech, and then I'm gonna switch into the game and make sure it kind of translate to the game properly. So, yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, just post them up, I'll do my best. Uh, I'm not an expert, I just, I'm self-taught in this stuff, so um, one place that really helped me out was the Discord server, so check out the Project Zomboid Discord or ask on the forums. Um, but other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, uh, can't wait to see what you guys make.